Good morning, and welcome to All Around the Home. I'm Tom Hudson, your host for the program. And the last program, we cleaned the fireplace, and the time before that, we were on the roof, looking at roof problems and beginning to get ready for winter. And at that time, we mentioned that one of the things we wanted to look at before the temperature dropped and the weather really started to deteriorate was at the garage door. Uh, garage doors, we put them up and down every day, several times a day in most cases, and really never take much time to maintain that door. We don't even look at the door. People come into the store, either store, and the only time they ever look at their door is when they've got a problem. The hinge is broken, they've got a cable that's broken, the spring is broken, and there's a lot of things that we can do, and you can do at home very economically to take care of that garage door. So you don't run into problems with it when it's 20 degrees below zero in January. And what we're going to do is take a few minutes today and we're gonna work on two different garage doors. We're going to look at a stretch spring and we're also gonna look at a torsion spring garage door. And those are the two types that you're going to find. And hopefully you'll know what a stretch spring, if you've got a stretch spring on your garage door or you know if you have a torsion spring. We're gonna do some very basic lubrication of the door uh, things that you can do to make it operate better and run longer. And, you know, it's just very, very cheap to do these things. We maintain our cars, we take care of those, we never do much work with the garage doors. So we're going to take time to do two doors today, and actually we're going to do a Genie also. Uh, those of you that have automatic garage door openers, whether it's a Genie or a Campbell or a True Value or, or whomever's door, uh, they require a little bit of maintenance, and you can make those operate a lot easier too. So we're going to do two doors in an automatic garage door opener today's program. And we're going to start by looking at, at garage door parts, which we've got down in front. And basically, these are the only things that are going to go wrong with your garage door unless uh, you back the car into it or you, you, you ruin a panel. Uh, hinges. I'll tip those up, John. And, and there are different hinges on a garage door. We're going to explain this a little bit more as we get over to the garage. And almost everything today, no matter where you, where you go to shop, you're going to find that on the back, they've also got some excellent labeling because hinges are numbered on a garage door. Uh, if a hinge breaks, it'll be a number one, a number two, or a number three. Uh, you look at the back of the package and it tells you exactly what hinge you need. And today we're gonna to take a hinge off. Uh, the other common thing that will go wrong with a garage door besides a hinge will be a roller. And these are garage door rollers. And we're going to cut one out because the door that we're going to work on does have a bad roller. And we're going to replace a roller today. A garage door roller. This allows the, the door to go up and down this metal track. has bearings in it. If you've noticed, you can even see it's, it's got oil on it. It's nice. It's lubricated. The ones we're going to look at today won't be lubricated. In fact, we probably already ruined the bearings by not taking care of it and lubricating it. The other part of the doors that we're going to look at today, cables. This is the cable that's going to attach the door itself to the stretch spring to pull this door up and make it light. Your garage door weighs maybe 300 pounds. So the springs are going to enable us to, to lift the door easily. And we're going to look and make sure that they're not frayed. If they break, uh, and, and these, these, the cables will break, they can be replaced rather easily. The thing you want to do is measure how long that cable is when you come in so we can give you the right cable. Springs will break. This is a standard stretch spring. Uh, there'll be two of these on the door that we're going to look at first. They're just called a stretch spring. They go on each side and they've got the strength and the support that we need to pull the door up. So when you look at your garage door, you'll be able to determine if, it, if it's a stretch spring that's broken or a torsion spring, and a torsion is altogether different, and where it's mounted is altogether different on the door. This is a torsion spring. And you notice it's much larger, and it's going to act altogether different. We're not going to stretch the spring out. It's going to get its strength by twisting. And this, door is, this spring is mounted in a different area altogether. So this is a torsion. This is a stretch. We're going to look at both doors. And we're going to take a hinge off, we're going to put a roller in, we're going to lubricate the door, and we're also going to lubricate it with not motor oil. Uh, this is one of the, the, the most difficult things 
people will come in in the winter time especially, especially on automatic garage door openers, and when it gets real cold, that door opener will just chatter. It'll hardly want to lift the door. Uh, they think something's wrong with the operator, and usually the operator is just fine, and if you talk with them a little bit, they say, you know, I just oiled it up. I don't know why it's running. And the oil that they use many times is, is a heavy oil, almost like a car oil uh, that you'd put in your car. And if you think about it, if you go out to your, your car in the morning that's been outside and it's minus 10 degrees or it's 5 degrees, turning that car over in the morning, the battery, it cranks, it just doesn't want to turn. That oil's gotten so heavy. And that's the same thing that happens in your automatic door openers. People will put a regular oil on that. They come out in the morning and the garage, uh, you know, it's 20 degrees and that garage door opener starts to try to turn and that oil is so hard that it doesn't, well, that opener just doesn't want to work properly. So we're going to use a special oil on those automatic openers and on the rollers also. So we're going to step now over to a door, John, we're going to go over and we're going to work on a garage door. All we're going to need is a wrench, very simple. We're going to take a hinge off, we're going to lubricate a door, check the cables and make sure that the door is ready for the winter and the upcoming weather. So let's go take a look at the door. How you doing? Okay, we've come over to the garage door that we're going to do a, a quick repair on. You'll probably see in about five or ten minutes is all it's going to take, but we can save ourselves a lot of headaches. And Ron's going to give us a hand again. Ron, if you can okay. want to join us, we're going to do some work here. What we've done is again, every, as we've said the hinges are all numbered and we're just going to take a hinge off this door because this roller I can tell right now that we haven't oiled it probably in 10 years. I don't think it's probably ever been oiled. Never been oiled. <laughs> and we're going to pull this out and we're going to put a new roller in it. But to do that we're going to take the hinge off and then we'll inspect the roller. So Ron if you want to okay. show how easy it is to take a hinge and a roller off. Basically all you got to do is just unbolt the hinge the nuts will be on the inside of the door because the bolts come from the outside in. Makes a much neater appearance on the outside. Okay, now that's and the then end. the roller just pulls right out. See how this roller really wobbles considerably. And the you know how are, clean it is. So Just a little really, dust. Never really cleaned it and taken care of it. Uh, this is the way a lot of a lot of rollers will look like at home. Uh, I'm sure mine do at my own home because I don't look after it that closely. But you know the buildup on this day after day is just really amazing. And we'll compare this roller to one of the new rollers, and you can just see the difference. Uh, see that one's so firm. This one just there's bearings in the little roller bearings that you can actually see, but. If you notice this, we've just let it get a little bit too far, and so we're going to replace this. Now, this is how difficult this is. Ready, Ron? He's already replaced it. Just slide that in. Slide this back in, and now we've got a roller. Now, you've got to tip this bearing. just a little bit to get the roller inside the track. You try to push it straight in, you can't. Just tip a little bit, hinge back in place, put the nuts back on, tighten it down. Very simple replacement. I've had people just uh, while he's tightening this up actually bring rollers in that are actually you know, broken. I mean, they've yeah. come right off. 
Uh, doors don't operate and run up and down this track. There's a little lip if you look at your garage door, a little track that those rollers roll in. And when they don't roll properly, it makes it much more difficult to operate. What we're going to do, Ron, is we're, I'm going to get out of your way and we can get the ladder. We're going to, or you're going to take just a minute now, yeah. and we're going to oil all the rollers. And again, we're not going to use the motor oil. Things that you have around the house, like a WD-40. Lithium is very good. Um, we'll put that in all the rollers, and that, of course, lubricates the bearings up all the way down. So we're just going to do one side on this door today, and we'll have to catch the other one later because of time. So, Ron, I'll get out of your way. You can choose either one and, you know, either scrape the whatever it takes to get to those things. We'll do these. We'll put a little on the track, and then I want you to go up. And we'll take a look at the cables and see if they're frayed or they're not frayed. You can choose either one of those. Okay, one thing before we get started in that, I want to explain. You said hinges are numbered. That's correct. Okay, hinges are numbered according to what, where they are on your door. Where your first and second panel meet, it's going to have a number one hinge. Number one hinge, each end and also in the center on a standard nine foot width door. Come up to your next, where your second and third panel meet, going to have a number two hinge. The difference being is where the <coughs> roller stem is, it sticks out just a little further away from the door. That's because your track is angled slightly out at the top. That allows when your door raises for your door to clear, come back just a little bit away from the opening. That way it doesn't rub tight the whole way up. And then you get up here to where your third and fourth panel meet, you've got a number three hinge. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to explain that real quick. Okay, now we'll go ahead. First thing we're going to do is just try and clean up the rollers as best we can. Get the dust off of them. Also wipe the track out. Track will get built up with dirt, dust, and then you've got old lubricant in there. Just go down through and just wipe Wipe it out a little bit. That'll make your new grease much more effective. You can see we've got quite a bit of dirt and a lot of dust in this one built up over the years. Now for the rollers, first we're going to take and just use WD-40 and just spray right around where the bearings are going to be, fairly close to the stem. WD-40 works as two things. It works as a lubricant, it also works as a cleaner. It's got different types of chemicals in it. It'll clean out a little bit of the old grease and the dirt. It also acts as a little bit of an oil in there to help lubricate it. Now you need the ladder here yet, Ron? Right then we'll go ahead and take the lithium grease now. Just put a little bit of grease on there. We'll take also and just put a little bit on the track. Because the rollers are going to run along there. It just makes a nice smooth operation. Okay, I want to check your cables also. Your cable is going to be attached at the bottom of your door. The cable actually runs behind the track here. You've got to almost pull it out to the side to look at it. You just take and run your fingers up along that cable. If there's any spots that are going to be afraid where it's been wearing against something, you'll be able to feel it real quick. Probably stick the wire right in your finger. Then you'll know. Okay, these cables are real good still. The ends of them haven't frayed any. Okay, so we'll get the ladder in here and go up and Work a little bit more up on the top of it now. 
clean the try and clean the track out some more. All right, you might show what happened to that stretch spring. Uh, look how long, when the door is closed, the spring is stretched. Now, see, this is what we call the difference between a stretch and a torsion. This is a stretch spring, and it's now stretched. When the door is up, the spring is very short, like we showed you when we first began the show. And when you go to replace that spring, if one of these springs breaks, uh, trying to lift the door is almost impossible. Uh, when one spring is working on one side of the door and one not, doesn't work on the other, it's a real problem. The door just doesn't want to move. Again, it's like trying to lift a couple hundred pounds. So when you go to replace a stretch spring, the door is open. So you'll have to get the door open. You'll need some help. And you'll either put a two by four or ladder something under it so the spring is back to itself and it's not stretched when it's compressed down. That's when you'll replace the spring. When it's stretched like this, it's impossible. So to replace the spring on a stretch spring, the door is going to be open for us. Now, Ron, go back up. I just want to see this okay. stretch. Now we're going to yeah. go back and look at it. Okay, when your cable runs out, you're going to have a series of pulleys. One mounted here, just a stationary one, just for the cable to run on, and then your other one up here mounted on the end of the spring. Same thing here. We'll want to oil them up a little bit. Make sure you get both sides of it. And then there again, we'll put just a little bit of the grease on them. Then we'll finish putting a little bit of grease inside the track here. See, and then you gotta check, like I say there again, check your cable the full length. Clear out to where it'll fasten here, somewhere on your track system, usually up towards the, the wall here. And just make sure that all of the connections are tight, there's no frays in the cable or a weak spot that would tend to tear quicker. Okay. That pretty much covers, you know, your base, basic, basic thing, just making sure everything is clean, uh, well lubricated, and uh, you don't see any, uh, like I say, any spots on the cable that tend to tear quicker. And again, this is a stretch spring. If you notice, there's a spring on this side, and if we pan across on the garage door to the other side, there's a spring on that side also. So on a stretch spring, garage door, you have a spring on both sides. Again, we've got the same configuration on this side of the door as we do on the other side. And the same thing we'll do, we we'll want to clean the rollers, we want to check the cable. We'll go right down this side of the door, just like we did on the other side of this door. But now we're going to leave the stretch spring and we're going to go look at a torsion spring. And we're going to get a, an automatic garage door opener ready for the cold weather, which is coming in the not too, too distant future, I'm afraid. So let's go take a look at that one. Okay, we're looking at another garage door. Uh, if we look to the center of this door, this is called a torsion spring. Now that's when we started the program, we showed you the real big, thick, heavy springs that don't stretch. And this door operates in these springs by a twist. And they've got a tremendous amount of torque. And when it comes time to changing a torsion spring, if you should break one, you probably ought to ask for help. It's a, it's a difficult spring to change versus a stretch spring. So the springs on this one are in the center of the door. We're going to glance at this door quickly and, and uh, look at a, at a different cable system because the torsion is a little different than the stretch. And then we're going to work on the automatic garage door opener. Again, it takes no more than five, ten minutes, but I think we've made the door so it's going to make it a lot easier winter for everybody. So, Ron, why don't you uh, glance okay. at this door again, bring over whatever you've got to, explain to them what we're going to check, and how we're going oh. to do that. Okay. The door is the same door. It doesn't matter whether it's stretch spring, torsion spring. It's just the lifting mechanism is your difference. There's not quite as much to lubricate on a torsion. Basically what you've got is just a set of bearings at each end. There again, all you've got to do, the bearings are, might be a little difficult for John here, the bearings are just mounted on a plate. There again, just wipe them off. And any lights? I see out there, okay, Ryan? 
Okay. Spray them a little bit can you, there. Come around. Can you see the bearings on that side okay? If not, they're they're kind of. On this side, John. You see there's the bearings on this torsion. at the end of the rod. And just lubricate those. There again, check your cables. The cable's going to come up and let's go around the drum here. You know, just, there again, let's say just run your hand around the cable. Make sure the cables are solid. That looks pretty good, yeah. And everything looks good. And again, the, the same process will take place on the rollers. Go on yeah. each of the rollers all the way down on each of the hinges and keep those lubricated properly. Might as well do that while you're up high. Make sure yeah, we'll just get these all right all right here. This is a spray lithium grease. They also have a lithium grease in a tube. Either one will work fine, it's just the spray is a little easier for us to use right here. Okay. 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 Now Not too look, much. Now let's look at this. Go to John, I made a comment about this. Is this the oldest genie is serial number one? No, it's not. There are models older than that that are still working. But I would say that this garage door opener is probably close to 20 years old. Uh, it has what they call a screwdriver or a worm gear versus a chain. There are several different types on the market. Genie makes the door, Chamberlain makes the door opener, Moromatic makes the door opener. A lot of people are in uh, the, the garage door opener business. A lot of people just refer to them as Genies because Genie, it's almost like Four Mike. Everybody thinks it's Four Mike, but there's a lot of companies. They're all good, just like Genie, but Genie's, everybody knows a Genie, they call it a Genie. But there's more rheumatic, Chamberlain, as they said, a lot of different companies produce these. Stanley makes a door opener. We're going to look up into this one and show you some very basic lubrication again. I'll use a light to help Ron see yeah, it. This so is now a this screw shows or a worm the, drive. The screw drive runs inside the channel here. It's actually a mechanism that raises and lowers the door. There again, all we want to do, come in here, Wipe out the old grease. This has been lubricated pretty well over the years. Shows very little signs of any wearing. Uh, got quite a bit of lubricant still on it, but it doesn't hurt to clean it out, get rid of the old lubricant there. There again, just taking, spray a little bit of grease right on that. And you don't have to worry about getting the complete whole way around the rod here, because as that thing turns, it'll work that grease clear up in and around and lubricate everything. Okay, now Ron, you hold the light. I'm going to put the door up about three feet, and you'll actually see the worm gear start to work, and you'll see it turn that grease and go up and lubricate the whole area. You can see the worm gear, I think, turn. You see it all right? No? Yeah. See, that took it right back up in real nice, didn't it? Yep. I didn't bring it all the way up to the stop switch. So let's go on out to the end, and then we'll have this one lubricated all the way. Move my ladder here. Chain drive. Pretty much the same. Yeah, just clean and, and grease the chain. Don't use a heavy grease, use a lithium grease. Something that the, the temperature doesn't affect. So when it gets cold, we don't have to worry about putting extra weight on this. Someone always yeah. comes in too, I think, uh, Ron, one of the problems that we have that people will come in and they talk about, they'll come in and say, I can hardly lift my garage door. Uh, I've got to get a garage door opener. And that's not the problem. A garage door opener will not lift a garage door. Uh, the springs do the lifting, whether they're stretch springs or whether they're torsion springs. Uh, all that genie or whatever door opener we're using is going to raise and lower it. But if the, if the door seems too heavy, then it's the springs that are the problem, not the door opener. So if you're having problems with your garage door, 
and you think it's too heavy, a door opener is not going to solve a problem. The springs either have to, they have to be adjusted. So if you have a problem, don't get a door opener. That's not going to save it. You may ruin the door opener because the door opener to work effectively has to be able to have the springs help lift it. Have we forgot anything on these? I think we've pretty. I think we've that. pretty well covered basics on everything. Uh, there again, one warning though on the torsion springs. Torsion springs do have quite a bit of torque behind them. Approximately 350 pounds of torque per spring. And it's just held on there with two set screws. You're loosening them screws and that spring will fly loose. Been quite a few people seriously injured from those. Yeah. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, get somebody that's qualified to do it for you. Yeah, torsion springs are, can really be dangerous. So you've, you've got to be careful because they use special, I don't know, they got They've got, bars yeah, they a 24 inch with. bar that you've got to uh, use to tighten to that take spring. take that torque off. If you don't, you can get in trouble. I, you know, it'll break an arm or crack a jaw yes. or anything. You have to be careful with the tours and springs. Excellent. Well, Ron, thank you for helping us. You're welcome. It's uh, been an easy show, but I think one that if you just take 10 minutes of your time, any time, evening, afternoon, go out, look at the garage door, do a little lub bit of lubricating, a little maintenance, look at the door opener, get it ready for the winter when these temperature drops. I think you'll save yourself some real headaches. Yeah, it's just something that needs to be done once a year. It's not something that needs, you know, an often schedule. Just some, once a year makes a big difference. However, if they're like a lot of people, it's probably been five or ten years or longer right. since you look at it. So That's take a right. look at that. Thanks for joining us again, Tom Hudson, for All Around the Home. And we're going to begin work now on the next shows on some very basic insulation around the home so we can cut those heating costs and keep it warmer. Thank you. Thank you.